Hi everyone, today is another Dear Joanne video, so let's just get to it. Dear Joanne, let's talk music and film. Now, recently I have been watching more films than what I'm usually used to, and it kind of got me thinking about, well, how involved we get in the storyline, the plot, and the characters. And it also got me thinking, why? So a couple of days ago, my friend and I watched The Duff, which, oh my goodness, if you haven't seen it yet, seriously, go and see it. And I absolutely adored it, as you can probably tell from that previous reaction. And it kind of got me thinking because the film got stuck in my head for the rest of the day. And it got me thinking, why? Why is this stuck in my head? Why am I so bothered about the storyline? Why am I so bothered about what it means to me? Why am I letting myself feel something for this film? Because at the end of the day, it's just a film. Just a film. I don't even think it was based on a real story, which I guess if it's based on a true story and all that, then I think you're supposed to feel something. And especially if it's based on like, I always feel like, if it was a book originally and then it got turned into a film, usually they want you to feel like the heart-wrenching pain for that character because when you read the book, that's exactly what you feel. But I feel like sometimes we get too attached to things like films and also music, but I will get to that bit a bit later. Um, I don't know why it is. Is it because we are trying to escape? Sometimes I will sit down I will get my computer out, get on Netflix or get the DVD out and put it in my computer and I will put on a feel good film. Usually if it's for Netflix I'll put on Clueless because who does not love Clueless? I absolutely adore that film. Or it'll be 10 Things I Hate About You or it'll be Bridget Jones. Those are the three go to films for me and the reason why is because I know the story now. I know exactly what's going to happen in every single like scene. And I know the characters inside out as well as you're allowed to know about them because at the end of the day, the fictional characters. And it got me thinking, why do we have specific go-to films? Is it because we're comfortable with that storyline? Because we're comfortable with the characters? We know what's going to happen, therefore you can't really get lost in it in the way that a new film you can. I don't know how to explain this. This is why this is my third time filming this video because I just, I cannot speak my thoughts because it's just all jumbled in my head, but it makes so much, so much sense in my head that I can't get them out. So basically, I, if I'm having a bad day and I need a good pick me up, I will watch either, probably Bridget Jones because I always think to myself, well, my life isn't Bridget Jones yet, so might as well watch her life and feel a bit better about mine. I will sit and I will watch that and probably recite most of the lines because to me, I've escaped and I forgot about my own problems and I'm focusing on Bridget's problems and I'm focusing on her love affair between Daniel Cleaver and Mark Darcy. Mark Darcy. Oh. Yeah, I usually watch it just for Mark Darcy, let's be honest. Every girl does. But yes, so I will sit and I will enjoy the film, laugh along with it, cry when, when it gets sad. And yeah, but why do we still feel these emotions when we know it's going to happen? Do you know what I mean? Like, I could tell you what happens in the entire film, probably in the right order, and when it gets to the sad part, I will probably still feel that tightness in my chest and be like, oh, Bridget. But at the end of the day, I know what's happening, so why, why am I letting myself get so attached to these characters? Maybe it's because I've watched them for years. Maybe it's because I've been brought up with these films that I think, oh, these are mine, these are, this is my childhood. Do you know what I mean? Like. Why do we let ourselves sit down, watch a film, get introduced to new characters, go through the journey with them, get lost in the story as if we, it is us, and then when something really bad happens, we cry. I know that sounds like I've been really emotionally dense, but like, 
I was watching, what was I watching? I was watching the last song the other day with my mum. And that's a great film. I'm not, not slating the film. It's just the ending. We all know what happens at the end. I'm not going to spoil it if you haven't seen it, but we all know what happens if you've seen it. And I genuinely cried. Now, anyone that knows me will know I don't cry. Not a crier. Don't deal with emotions, me. Now, I don't like emotions and I don't like crying. Crying, I can't cry. Put on the last song, I'll cry. And I think it's because I remember reading, because I promised myself that I was going to read the book first and then watch the film. Even though I really, really, really wanted to watch the film, I wanted to read the book first because the book is always 10 times better than the film. Just the truth. And I think at that part of the ending when it's really, really sad, it really got to me when I was reading the book. Because back then, I'd cry if I wanted to cry. Now, oh, I can't. This is on backwards and it's really bothering me. Um, sorry, just bear with me a second. Oh my god, how can I put this on the wrong way? It got a paper aeroplane on it. Don't know if you can see it. If I could fly, I'll be coming right back home to you. you. That song. We will go through that song in a video one day. Oh, Harry Styles, you look. Anyway, I think I've got a bit off topic. I'm gonna be babbling on for like seven and a half minutes. Going on here. So, because of that, I think that is why I got so emotional when the ending happened in the film. But I genuinely felt a lot of emotion that I didn't realise I was feeling. Now, I had a lot of things going on in my personal life and it kind of opened a lot of, like a can of worms for me and realised I had to grow up a little bit and just sort of face some problems that were going on. And I did, um, kind of. So, I think sometimes we do get a bit too lost and my question is why, why do we get so lost in these films that have been directed and these actors don't actually feel these emotions because at the end of the day it's just a script for reading off, it's not real, it's not a true thing, it hasn't happened to them, they don't care, they'll do a crying scene and five seconds later they'll go cut and then ha ah, everything's funny again yeah, they don't care. That's the most fakest stuff I've ever done in my life. Well, I think sometimes we use things such as films as a pick-me-up to sort of forget about any emotions we're feeling currently in that moment. And I think we also use them for escape. But is that really a good idea? Like, why are we using other people's stories? I mean, albeit they're probably... What is happening to me today? Okay, that was... Black skies were telling me. Why are we using someone else's emotions and someone else's story that is all made up 90% of the time to escape our own real life problems? Which, yes, there's a quote that says, a year's time, what you're dealing with now probably won't matter. And it probably seem like a little thing. Probably because you've moved on to the next little thing that you bothered about. But the point is, why are we forgetting our own problems by watching a film. Why are we not just dealing with the problem? Like, I'm one of them people that will say that I don't care. Don't care, don't care, don't care. And obviously I care, but I'm telling everybody that I don't and I've got the front and I'm like, nah, I don't care. And last year I did that for a good five months. Very good at math for me. For a good five months and said I didn't care. And everyone could tell I cared, but I told everyone I didn't care, don't care. Which, Fair dues. If that's how I wanted to deal with it, that's how I wanted to deal with it. And I would do things like watch films and watch TV shows that I was obsessed with and just forget and pretend that it wasn't a thing and that I didn't feel upset about this thing. But that's fine. That's how I wanted to deal with it and I wanted to escape everything that was going on in my head. And the question is, why is our generation so scared of dealing with our emotions, with our thoughts, with our problems. I for one am very scared of dealing with my emotions. I'll put my hand up. 
Don't like them. Don't like emotions. They're too messy. <laughs> Forever single, aren't I? Just, just <sighs> get that out there. So, yes, that's the movie part of the Dear Joanne. The music one is why are we so adamant of trying to find out what the song was written about? I, for one, am so bad at this. So, obviously, as you know, I am obsessed with One Direction. And they write songs like If I Could Fly. And basically, we want to know why did they write this song? What, who was it written about? What's, what made them feel that way? And people, you know what? The people that listen to music just to listen to music, you people are saving the planet. All right, that might sound like I'm over exaggerating, but you are saving the planet. Because there are people like me that will sit there and analyze lyrics from day in and day out and try and figure out the hidden meaning about this song. It's so bad, especially when you have people like Harry Styles answering questions. What is Olivia written about? Is Olivia an emotion? Is she a person? We don't know. She's not a person because she didn't write it about, he didn't write about a girl called Olivia. He just called it Olivia. It's like Diana, they wrote Diana, they were gonna call it Joanna originally. Then it sounded like Louis' mum's name, so they can change it to Diana. Diana, I have a friend called Diana. So why are we so adamant on finding the hidden meaning behind songs? I mean, yeah, when you sort of like, I don't know, I don't know. Not all, not, I don't do it to all like artists, because like there are some that I just play to enjoy. And sometimes I will listen to something and you will find a reason to why you like the song. So I will listen to, I don't know, Adele when we were young. That song means something completely different to Adele when she wrote it. To me, it means a past memory that I've had and gives me emotion. I don't like listening to that song all the time. And I sort of go into like a blank stare kind of thing when I'm driving and it plays on the radio. Um, but it's one of them things where you will listen to a song and it will remind you of a moment. Or it will remind you of a time in your life where you felt these emotions. Which, things like Adele when we were young, reminds me of that. And there are playlists on my Spotify that I will never play again because I don't want to feel their emotions again. But they are there because they remind me that it happened. But why are we so adamant on having somebody else's experiences and someone else's lyrics and someone else's words become our own? Maybe it's sometimes like, let's say if, for example, Ed Sheeran's Kiss Me now reminds me of my brother's wedding because that was his wedding song that is the song that they did their first dance to and now every time I hear it I imagine being in Cyprus watching them get married it was all adorable I also had a video up last week if you want to, well not last week the week before if you want to check it out links in the description there are always songs that remind you of a certain time but why are we so adamant on claiming them as ours if you get what I mean so like me and Joanne I'm talking to have a pop it song which is Shake It Off by Taylor Swift. Don't know if you've got it yet. I no longer like Taylor Swift. I don't like her music anymore. If I listen to it, I'll turn it off on the radio. I'm I'm not bitter. I'm not a bitter person. Probably a lie, but basically, I am sick to death of listening about Taylor Swift. So our pop it song, if it's on on the radio, I don't care. I will not go. Oh my God! It's my song. Do you want? Do you want to stop? I'll turn it off. <laughs> cannot deal anymore. Cannot deal. And that is so weird that how a song can affect you so much. Why are we letting these things affect us? So that's just kind of like a little snippet into the jumbled up mess about this topic. And yes, let me know what you think. Joanne, I cannot wait to read your blog post. Also, if you want to see Joanne's videos because she's now officially a YouTuber, I will leave the links in the description. I will be back next week and yes, I will see you again next week. Bye!